In this problem, I need to sketch the graph of this equation here. Well, let's take a look to see if we can figure out what it's going to be. If you notice, I have an x squared term and I have a y squared term. So when the x is squared and the y is squared, it's either a circle, ellipse, or a hyperbola. And notice the coefficients of the x squared and the y squared, they're both positive, but they're not equal. So if the coefficients of the x squared and the y squared are both positive, but they're not equal, this looks like it's going to be an ellipse. So we look like we're going to have an ellipse. We're going to have to complete the square to make sure. And remember, the equation of an ellipse looks like x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k all squared over b squared equals 1. I need to get a positive 1 on the right-hand side. Then, if it looks like this, we know the center is at positive h, positive k, the opposite of the numbers. The opposite of this number is the x-coordinate. The opposite of this number is the y-coordinate of the center. And then a tells you how far you have to go left and right from the center. b tells you how far you have to go up and down from the center to get points on your ellipse. So I think we're ready to try and put it in standard form. Remember, this is standard form here. To do that, what we have to do is we have to write our x's together. So we want to write our 16x squared first. Then we want the x term, which is negative 96x, and then we want to put plus a blank. We're going to do the same with the y's. We're going to have 25y squared. Follow it by the y term, which is plus 100y, plus another blank, equals, now remember we're going to have to add this number to both sides. I want my number on the right-hand side. So I'm going to have 156 plus a blank plus a blank. The reason we do this is because, remember, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you must do exactly the same to the other. So if I add a number here on the left, I must add a, the same number on the right, and the same here. So to complete the square, remember, we cannot complete the square unless the coefficient of the x squared and the y squared is plus 1. So what we have to do to start with is we need to factor out whatever coefficient is in front of the x squared and the y squared. So I'm going to work on the x's first. I'm going to factor a 16 out of these two terms here. So I'm going to get 16 times x squared minus 16 goes into 96 six times. And then I'm going to put plus my blank again plus 25, I'm going to have to factor a 25 out of these two terms. So I get 25 times y, the quantity y squared plus 25 goes into 100 four times, plus a blank, equals my right-hand side stays the same. Don't forget I need to put my two blanks there. So now I'm ready to complete the square. So what I'm going to do for the x's, I'm going to look at the b term. Remember, this is the b term. b is negative 6. We take b, we divide it by 2. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Then we take the b over 2 term that we got and we square it. So I have negative 3 all squared, which is 9. So the number I want to add to both sides is the square term. So I'm going to add 9 to that side. So now be very careful. This is a point where students often mess up. They go, I need to add 9 to both sides. Well, really, what number have you added to both sides? You've added 16 times 9 to the left-hand side, so you better add 16 times 9 to the right-hand side which in fact is 144. So 
What does this look like? I have 16 times the quantity x minus, what number goes in here with the x all squared? It's the b over 2 number. So I have 16 times x minus 3 all squared. Plus, now we're going to have to do exactly the same for the y's. So for y, what is the b term? Here's b. b is positive 4. You divide it by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then we take the b over 2 term and we square it. We get 2 squared, which equals 4. Remember, that's the number I'm adding inside the parentheses. But what number am I really adding to the left-hand side? I'm really adding 25 times 4. So to the right-hand side, I also have to add 25 times 4. Sorry, it doesn't show up because I'm almost off the edge of the page. So now I need to finish up what this looks like. So remember, I have 25 times the quantity y with something all squared. What number do I put in there? The b over 2 term. So it's y plus 2 squared equals 156 plus 16 times 9 is 144 plus 25 times 4 is 100. So one thing I want to mention at this point is to make, to make sure you've got it right, mentally foil this out in your head to see if you land up with this. First term squared, twice the product, last term squared. Do the same here to make sure you got this correct too. So now let's scroll up a little bit. And... I'm almost where I need to be, but I need to add the numbers on the right-hand side. So 156 and 144 and 100 adds up to 400. And the uh, left-hand side stays the same. So let's just rewrite that out. And now the only thing left to do is I need to get a 1 where the 400 is. So that means you're going to divide each term on the left by 400 and the term on the right. And so this results into x with x minus 3 all squared. 16 goes into 425 times plus y plus 2 all squared, 25 goes into 416 times, equals 1. So we can see this is the standard form of an ellipse. We know it's an ellipse and not hyperbola because this is a plus sign here. The center is at the opposite, the x value is the opposite of this number, the y value is the opposite of that number, so it's going to be at positive 3 and negative 2. And I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to use 25 is 5 squared. This is this is the standard form up here. If you're ever asked to write it in standard form, you're done here. But this is going to help me graph it because this number here tells me that when I get to the center, I'm going to go left and right 5 plus y plus 2 all squared over 16 is 4 squared equals 1. The 4 is going to tell me that I'm going to go up and down 4 units from the center. So now we're ready to graph it. I've taken the information from the previous slide. Here's the equation we're trying to graph. And remember, we've already written it in standard form right here. And when we wrote it in standard form, that allows us to find that the opposite of this number, 3, is the x-coordinate of the center. The opposite of this number, negative 2, is the y-coordinate of the center. Now I took the 25 and I wrote it as 5 squared, took the 16 and write it, wrote it as 4 squared. 
What that tells us is that once I've graphed it, I'm going to go five units to the left and the right of the center. And this number underneath the Y tells you you're going to go up and down four units to find the other two points on your ellipse. So I think we're ready to graph it now. So the first thing you do is you graph your center at 3, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, negative 2, which is down here. There's my center. Now remember this number here, the 5 tells us that we're going to go 5 units to the left of the center, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to here. And then from the center, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right. And this number here tells me I'm going to go up 4 from the center, 1, 2, 3, 4 to this point, and then down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And those are going to give me my four points on my ellipse. And since it's so hard to uh, graph an ellipse on this, I'm going to put it on pause and graph it, and then I'll be back to you. So here we have a graph of an ellipse. The center was at 3, negative 2, and I got my four key points, and then I tried to draw something roughly elliptical through those points.